AFC West team draft needs. Let's begin with the Kansas City Chiefs. They've been to a couple of Super Bowls. They've won one. They've got some, you know, do we even need to get it? They can't leave the 2022 draft without addressing, hmm, they don't have Tyreek Hill anymore. Uh, they've got two first round picks, the 50th and the 62nd overall picks as well. 12 total selections tied yeah. with Jacksonville for the most. Mm. What do they need? Should we skip over receiver yeah. and go to another position? Let's do that. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, yeah, I expect receiver to be somewhere on the radar. But like we discussed yesterday, I don't think it's like they don't have to reach for it. I think that's the good thing. But them going Juju and then MVS. That gives them a little bit of like they don't have to overreach. They're not like desperate, desperate. But I certainly think that's got to be on their radar. The one thing I look at, Mike, more than anything that just jumps up out their roster, of course it's a great roster and uh, they're great evaluators, is, is an edge guy. An edge guy. I mean, there was a reason they went out there and traded for Melvin Ingram for Pittsburgh last year. You know, Frank Clark, it's been a little all over the place. Last year was a very slow start. And – the Chiefs have had a hard time getting pressure with their front four. They were one of the, they were towards the bottom of football last year as far as sacks and Spagnolo and and company. Yeah, he can dial up some crazy blitzes and do all that, but as we know, you you don't want to live on that edge too much. You're going to get burned if you blitz too much. So, you know, another pass rusher would certainly I think do them well in this draft. You know, I had a thought and this piggybacks on what we were talking about earlier with the Andy Dalton, Justin Fields thing. I would almost be intrigued at this point because Chad Henney's been the backup forever. Yeah. For Patrick Mahomes. I'd be intrigued by finding a quarterback with a skill set that is somewhat similar to Patrick Mahomes and have somebody you develop, have somebody that is ready to go if Patrick Mahomes is injured, and then somebody you can flip for an equal or greater pick two or three years down the road, like Andy Reid always seemed to do. He was so good. Great at it in Philly. At taking backup quarterbacks, yeah. getting far more for them than they were worth, to the point where I don't think anybody wanted to trade with him anymore. No more quarterback trades with Andy Reid because he always makes them look infinitely better than we can. Remember the Kevin Cobb disaster? Sure, yeah. They became the starter 2011 in Arizona. Yeah, AJ Feely. I mean, he's had lots of guys. One like, after yeah, another right. after another. But I, I, I just and, – and look, they've done a good job of holding it together when they have to, when Mahomes can't play. But how about a guy that – can do the things not not that I mean I know that's the problem. It's not, just, it just, you're gonna yeah, right. I got you. But but a more mobile backup option, not a Chad Henney, somebody who can get, who can still run that offense the way Mahomes does it to make it easier for the other players, especially when you take Tyree Kill out of the equation. It's going to be harder, I think, for yeah. a lesser group of receivers to adapt to a lesser quarterback if Mahomes would be injured. I, I, I don't disagree with that. And, you know, the one thing that I love about Andy Reid and all those years and, and everything you're kind of discussing there is he was like, you know, he to me always has the right idea as far as like who to draft later on in the draft. He drafts the guy that can really maybe be something, not the guy that we go, oh, he's definitely a backup forever and he's great in the meeting room and he can get us out of the huddle. He goes with the guy that's like, okay, maybe not as great in all those areas, but has a real chance to be something on the field. Like, yeah, it's not perfect yet, but there's a real tangible like trait that the guy has to go, maybe it can be something. And to me, that's what you do in the mid rounds of the draft. If you go for the quarterback, instead of these guys that everybody's like, well, he can say the play the right way. It's very impressive. Like, so what? He'll never play to say the play because he's not good enough. So stop worrying about it. Yeah, so, so I, I like that about Andy Reid. Spoken by a guy who couldn't say the play. The <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, coach. Just get him open. I'll throw a laser in there. I'm great at that. All this talking mumbo jumbo. <laughs> The Raiders, uh, once coached by your former Tampa Bay coach, John Gruden, can't leave the 2022 draft without addressing what? And by the way, they've got the 86th overall pick. The round one and round two selections went to Green Bay for Devontae Adams. They only have five picks. What do they need more than anything else in this draft? I, I, I think tackle is where I come away with. with the, they have some things, I think, that I look at on their team maybe more than others where I just go, you know, they got to change some things around because such of a philosophical difference. Um, defensive tackle, I look at that and go, oh, you know, they want more big people there. But they did a decent job in free agency. 
Linebackers, one I look at because again, this is New England. They believe in bigger middle linebackers as compared to the last regime, Gus Bradley and company. They want that Seattle smaller, faster linebacker. But I do think I look at offensive line and, and tackle specifically, tackle opposite of Colton Miller. The right tackle position was less than from the Raiders last year. And McDaniels knows how important that position is. I'd be shocked if they didn't get one you know, somewhere with one of those picks. I remember a few years ago they made a concerted effort to go out and get some roughneck, badass dirtbag. And I mean that in a positive way. That's what Jim Mora, the younger, used to call it. That, that mindset on the offensive line. The guy who will, you know, yeah. always bring it to you right. physically, and I, the I'm incognito not saying that's what guy. Now. Right, right. But the but the but the bottom line is they need offensive linemen who fit what Josh McDaniels is trying to do, and we we know that it's always been kind of a unique approach, a different kind of thing in New England, where there's just a different mindset, a different philosophy, a different way of making it all happen. But they need something to effectively protect Derek Carr so he can get the football to this great group of pass catchers he now has. It doesn't matter if you have Devontae Adams and Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro if you aren't getting the protection. And there's going to be just a philosophical difference. It's the Patriot way taking over the organization, and especially at offensive line. They they need guys that Josh McDaniels believes can run the offensive line the way they want it to be run. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. They do. And, and of course, it's, it's an intricate offense that – you know, asks a lot of their offensive line. There's a lot mentally and physically of what they do. And one of the reasons that New England was so great for years and years is, you know, they, they had a vision and a great ability to evaluate offensive linemen. Of course, had a very good coach there, but they understand really how to protect the quarterback. I mean, again, they uh, it's 20 years with a quarterback that really doesn't move that well. Great in the pocket. We know that and all of that. But they did a good job of making sure he could just stay right there within the pocket. And, and I'm with you. I've got to think that's big time on their radar. All right, guys, here we go. Great to be around you guys. Fellas, it's been too long. Three months and eight days. I want you guys to think about this concept of a gym rat. And I want you guys to start thinking about that term because you guys get paid to play football for a living. All right, in order to be good at it, you have to work at it. You have to work at it. Oh, Brandon Staley getting them all fired up. Let me tell you something. We've got a quick image of Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert looking a little swole, as the kids would say. Definitely. Didn't he look a little larger to you? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, he's just he's, he's a big dude. Uh, I, I mean, remember when we saw him at the Combine, how easily he carried 240? You were like, oh, I mean, this is – he's just big shoulders. And the other thing you, you, you see there is just the speed. They had the one clip there of, like, everybody taking off on the, the sprint at the start of the video, and damn, I mean, Justin Herbert was one of the first out of the blocks. It's He's a specimen, and you're right. There is a little more structure in the chest and arms there than, than I used to see. All right, so the Chargers, who gave up the second-round pick to uh, the Bears for Khalil Mack, they hold the 17th overall selection, 10 total picks. They can't leave the 2022 draft without addressing what, Chris? Uh, the Chargers, it, it comes down to, like, two positions to me that, that seem to at least make sense. You know, offensive tackle, the right tackle position specifically, I think that's one you could look at. I think the other one that really kind of still jumps out to me, and they've tried to address this in free agency, is the, the defensive tackle position. That's the one I look at maybe more than anything. Uh, you know, again, the Chargers, it was, what, the worst run defense in football last year? I'm pretty sure it was. I should probably have double-checked that. If not worst, it's right up there with it. You know, They're sitting there in the late teens – which could be prime defensive tackle territory. Uh, I, I, I look at that as really being their, their number one need, Mike. They need that kind of guy. And I think with that defense and Staley and what he does too, you know, they ask their guys to, to do some space eating and stuff like that. And they don't have a lot of them on their roster. I, I 
I'm going to keep it very simple. And even though they added J.C. Jackson in free agency, yeah. I think they need to beef up the secondary More because they're dealing with Patrick Mahomes. They're dealing with Derek Carr and Devontae Adams and the other pass catchers with the Raiders. They're dealing with Russell Wilson and his great core of receivers. It is going to serve you well to have a defense that can slow down the other team just a little bit, just a little bit if you can uh, get away with that, because your offense is good enough to overcome them if you can just break serve once or twice during one of those AFC West games. All right, let's move on to the Denver Broncos. They don't have much to deal with because they have given up uh, selections from uh, the Russell Wilson trade. Rounds one and two picks are gone. They do have the 64th overall pick from the Rams, thanks to the Von Miller trade. Nine total picks. They can't leave the draft without addressing what, Chris? Well, again, there's two positions that pop out, and I'm not trying to cop out here. I'm just giving everybody a little info. Inside linebacker would be one that I'd look at for sure, but I think the one that's most glaring on their roster, and this is in lieu of the trade, is tight end. You know, tight end, I think, is a spot where not only do they need numbers, but they need another guy there uh, that's going to make that offense work. You know, it's it's a good – I can never say his last name. Uh, the tight end that is there right now, Albert o- o- Oka Week. O- oh, Alberto, I'm going to go with, okay? Alberto, solid, but he's not Noah Fant or a game changer that way. I would think where they're sitting at 64 that – well, maybe one tight end's off the board, but you might be able to get tight end two, three, or four right there at that moment to help your football team and Russell Wilson. I'd be looking for offensive linemen because sure. you want to keep Russell Wilson upright, yep. and he's always had offensive line issues in Seattle. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to talk to him at all about what he thinks about the draft, I think he gets a piece of paper and he writes an O and he writes an L and he hands it back to George Payton because they've got to make that investment in the guys up front to give him the time that he needs, especially because he's not as mobile as he used to be. At some point, he decided to add armor, natural armor to his body and sacrifice some of his mobility. And when you see pictures of him now, he he's bigger than he's ever been. He's carrying weight. And that's keeping him from running like he used to. So you need to have an offensive line. Chris, I don't disagree. That can keep him upright. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. There, there's a need there. They, they, you know, the other the right tackle position. Uh, that's definitely a question there. You know, and again, it's it's a draft that's got a lot of tackles there. So they can hopefully address that. But I don't think your thoughts wrong there. I think that's when I look at it. That inside linebacker, tight end. Those are the three I look at to be. You know. Uh, positions that that need to be addressed by the Broncos. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.